Blackstone Audio presents The Memory Garden by Mary Rickert. This book is read by Tavia Gilbert. Penny Royal Growing less than two feet in height, its flowers are usually blue, though they also occur in pink or white varieties. It is useful for flatulence, headaches, nausea, constipation, nervous weakness, and as an abortifacient. Over the years, shoes were often thrown at the old house, brooding atop its slope on Muir Glen Road. The sole occupant of the old Victorian showed no distress upon finding footwear strewn about, however. She merely studied the smelly things as though evaluating works of art, before taking them inside, where boots, sneakers, heels, and cleats were transformed into charming planters. It was because of the shoe garden that the house became locally famous, though there had always been rumors about disturbing fertile elements in the soil. The large elm tree, for instance, was not only unaffected by the disease that killed so many in the sixties, but also thrived, branching dark shadows across the entire left side of the porch, which did not impede the vigor of blue heaven morning glory or moonflowers trained to crawl up the railings. The rose mallow flourished in their boots, as did the hollyhocks, the hosta's great leaves obscured the shoes they were planted in. The penny royal grew so vigorously in the lady's slipper it had to be divided several times, and the forget-me-not sweetly flowered blue above men's work shoes. The rumors about the gardener grew along with the garden. She was a witch. Wasn't it obvious? Consider, as evidence, the young women arriving at all hours, alone, in pairs, occasionally accompanied by a man. Who knows what went on in there? Black magic, seances, love spells, abortions? But if you happened to drive down the isolated road as a visitor approached the house, she lowered her head or sheltered her face behind her hat and gloved hands, once even hiding behind an umbrella, though the day was sunny, with no threat of rain. Eventually, the rumors of women coming to the house on Muir Glen Road were replaced by the rumor of a baby left there, a foundling delivered by fairies, a wild child abandoned by wolves, a creature neither human nor beast, the product of a teenage romance, a little witch, a freak. But as the child grew, she proved to be mostly normal, except for the strange habits she had of talking to herself, and who could blame her? What child wouldn't be driven to distraction, raised in such circumstances? Ravens perch on the gables of Mere Glen, cawing at drivers who slow to look. Sample complete. Ready to continue?